So the previous video segues into this exercise really, really well. If you look at this, this change, this transformation that they want you to make happen in this exercise, even if you, you, your, your goal is not to see everything all at once or otherwise feel overwhelmed. Your goal is to notice little things and see what they imply. And the implications will eventually connect the starting molecule to the final molecule. First, let's look at that final molecule, and you'll notice from the previous video what we have here is an aldehyde. How can you make an aldehyde? What we learned from the previous video is that you can make an aldehyde from an alkyne. So I'm just going to copy this molecule down, the carbon chain down at first. If I had an alkyne here, and now I really want to redraw that. Oops, let me do this. So there's my carbon chain. I can put my alkyne attached to the carbon that has the double bond to the oxygen. And so I really just wanted to re redraw that in order to make it linear. So if I had this alkyne, I could turn it into an aldehyde by doing hydroboration oxidation. That's what we learned in that previous video that we made. So here, we could do that by adding first either 9-BPN or any dialkyl borane, followed by hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that's what we learned. If you see an aldehyde or a ketone, always think, okay, I could make that from an alkyne. I could, and just by doing acid catalyzed hydration or hydroboration oxidation. In this case, you want the you want the double bond to the oxygen to go on the less substituted carbon. That's anti-Markovnikov addition, and so hydroboration oxidation. So that's something you can connect. Now you may see that and be like, okay, well that's not my starting material, so I don't see the connection there. But if you get stuck going in backwards, start from the beginning molecule. What association, what changes here, and what associations does that have for you? You'll notice that there are two bromines here. Those aren't on the final product. In other words, we have to do elimination. We have to get those off the molecule. We have to eliminate them. Well, how do you do elimination with two leaving groups? It's a two-step process. We've seen this in a previous video, too. You just treat the molecule with excess sodium amide, And you follow it up with just a water wash. And you can, if you're just trying to predict sort of what that molecule is, you just draw the same carbon chain and have the two pi bonds between the two leaving groups. That's what we've seen in a previous video. But oh my gosh, what is this? This is the same thing as the other molecule we drew. In other words, if we do this elimination, we get that alkyne. And once we have the alkyne, we can do hydroboration oxidation to get the aldehyde. So that overall, you can make this whole transformation happen in four steps. First, use excess strong base, sodium amide, NaNH2. That will do the elimination and give, and twice and give you that terminal alkyne. It'll technically also steal a hydrogen off here and turn this carbon into a reactive nucleophile. And so you can protonate it, do a proton transfer to help stabilize it using the water. Once you have that alkyne, you can add the oxygen on the less substituted carbon by doing hydroboration oxidation. So first, you would add 9-BBN or any dialkyl borane and follow it up with, hydro oops, with hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. And those all together, that, that, that hydroboration oxidation will add H and OH, anti-Markovnikov, onto that triple bond. You'll have an enol that ketoenol tautomerizes into that aldehyde, as we've discussed previously in the chapter. So to make that whole transformation happen, it's just four steps. And conceptually, it's really just two. You do an elimination to get the two bromines off and create the alkyne. And then you do an addition to get the oxygen on the less substituted carbon. 
Now, if you don't have the, the reactions memorized, this process of thinking probably seems completely insane. And if that's the case, I strongly encourage you to pause, memorize all the reactions first, and then come back to this video. And you'll start to say, oh yeah, I see that connection. And then you'll start, be doing, you'll start to do the second essential thing in being successful in these synthesis exercises. The first essential thing is to memorize everything like the back of your hand, to know the reactions, the recipes, forwards and backwards. And the second thing is once you know them, to see, con make connections between them. You see bromines and you know you can do elimination. You see an aldehyde or a ketone and you know you can make it from an alkyne by doing acid catalyzed hydration or hydroboration oxidation. Okay, well, that's A. How about B? B is really a similar thing. Notice we have two leaving groups here. So we have two chlorines on our starting molecule and we don't have them anywhere in our product. So we know we have to do elimination with both of those. Well, how do you eliminate two things? You use first excess sodium amide followed by a water wash. And what that gives you is the same molecule, so the carbon chain is really the same, and actually let me just, carbon chain is really the same, but where you had those two chlorines on that carbon, when you leave, when they leave, you end up forming two pi bonds. And just so you can sort of conceptually see that connection. When one chlorine leaves, it creates one pi bond. When the second chlorine leaves, it creates the second pi bond in a mechanism that we've drawn in a previous chapter. Now the only thing here is this is still in the zigzag and alkynes are linear, so you have to redraw that like that. Okay, so, so far so good. We do an elimination, so we've gotten rid of the chlorines. What else is there? What else changes? We see an oxygen in the product that's not there in the reactant. In other words, we have to add that on we have to do an addition reaction. But what are we adding? We're adding an oxygen to get a ketone. A ketone, that association should be in your head. How can you make a ketone? You can make it from an alkyne. You can make it from an alkyne by doing hydration. Now, where do we want the double bond to the oxygen to be? We have two carbons. We have a primary carbon on the end, right, in this alkyne, and we have a secondary carbon sort of in the middle. The double bond to the oxygen went on the more substituted position, and the hydrogen went on the less substituted position. That is a clear indicator that we need to do Markovnikov addition. And the way to add H and OH in a Markovnikov way is acid-catalyzed hydration. So we use water, sulfuric acid, and when you do this with an alkyne, you add mercuric sulfate, HgSO4. And that gives you your product. Same molecule, same number of carbons. You just have the ketone there. Now, really, this adds an H and an OH in a Markovnikov way, and then it undergoes ketoenal tautomerization to give you the ketone. But there it is. The overall recipe would be three steps long. Excess sodium amide, strong base, to do two successive eliminations and create two pi bonds, and you just shake it up with some water to stabilize this carbon at the end. Then, acid-catalyzed hydration, Markovnikov addition of H and OH, which then ketoenol tautomerizes to give you the ketone. And that is that. So once more, I can't stress enough to learn the reactions forwards and backwards really, really well. And also, as you learn these new reactions. Go back and review the old ones. They never go away. You'll see as, these, as the, the chapter goes on, we'll be using the reactions from the alkene chapter in addition to these from the alkyne. So you've already learned the alkene ones. Don't lose those. Even if it's just once a week, flip through at flashcards for those so that you can refresh them in your memory while you're also learning these new ones. Once you have them all memorized, come and do these exercises. Try to do them multiple times from a blank sheet of paper without a reference. And see if you can see the connections. And if not, hopefully these videos will help out.